one of a kind specialty spirit taking over the cocktail market and it's being made right here in Montgomery County. Find out more as we take you inside Lansdale's Boardroom Spirit. We're here inside Boardroom Spirits with co-owner Marat Mamadov. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you. So tell us your story. So the Boardroom Spirits name comes from our corporate backgrounds. Uh, my wife, brother, and I were the three owners. And uh, in our former lives, before starting Boardroom Spirits, we used to uh, you know, work for management consulting companies, uh, traveling across the country, across the world, uh, working with some of the largest uh, corporations out there. The inspiration for starting this, the distillery uh, really came from our heritage. Uh, my, my, my brother and I being Armenian and my wife being Hungarian, both countries with strong brandy production cultures and we wanted to bring those traditions uh, from the old world and combine them with uh, the entrepreneurial spirit and you know a lot of the ingenuity that you're seeing happening in the uh, craft spirits industry in the US today. Yeah, so why, why Lansdale? Why did you end up here with your idea? Lansdale was kind of the perfect location for what we're trying to accomplish at the distillery. Um, and Lansdale, it, it's kind of that right town that's located close to the Lehigh Valley, close to Philadelphia. PA is one of the best states to get some um, agricultural products that we can use then to create our, uh, our rich uh, brandies that we're looking to, uh, to offer the customers. So speaking of locally sourced ingredients, you have some unique spirits here, yes, right? Yes, we do, we do. Um, right now we are focusing on making our brandies with the apples. We'll work on pear next. Uh, but the most unique one um, that I think you know, anyone has in the country is our uh, beet specialty spirit. Um, it's created much like a brandy is, except the, the key twist to that is that we're using vegetable um, to create the spirit, not fruit. So this sounds like it would be a good, unique holiday gift. That would be a fantastic gift for the beet lover, or even non-beet lover, you know, you can use it as a collection. Yeah, you have other flavors, right? How about another holiday-infused flavor? Absolutely. So where the beet is a spirit, uh, eau de vie, um, we also do have um, our fresh line of flavored vodkas. Um, I call them flavored because we technically have to call them flavored, but they're really uh, fruit infused. And that's because we use real fruit uh, to make the, you know, the flavored vodka. Um, we don't use juice, we don't use concentrate, we don't take shortcuts with artificial flavors, no sweeteners, no preservatives, no food coloring. And you um, list the ingredients on the bottle we too. We do list the ingredients on the back for transparency to customers so you know what you're drinking. Yeah. Um, it's organic sugar cane or wheat vodka, the real fruit and water. That's it, three ingredients. I love it, Thank simple you. and straightforward. Thank you. So you offer tours here? Absolutely. We offer free tours every Saturday and Sunday at 1 and 5 o'clock. We will be adjusting some of the tour times, so you know, be on the lookout for that on uh, uh, Facebook and our website. Um, and they're about 40, 45 minutes of pretty in-depth process-related information. Um, you, know, you can see the majority of the facility, but we can't see are the details that go into making the specific product. Well, how about you show us what you've got? I'd love to. So Marat, tell us what we're standing in front of right now. So this is our mash tun. Um, it's basically a glorified cooker uh, at the end of the day. If you've ever been to a brewery, very similar process. Um, distilling and brewing have very similar processes at the very beginning. And the mash tun is basically used to uh, break down the starches of grains into simple fermentable sugars. It's the fuel that will then create alcohol in the fermentation process. The one unique thing um, about not only the mash tun but our facility is while we are a craft distillery, uh, we've really invested a lot in the best, most innovative and automated equipment out there. Um, so with this mash tun, we can actually program a recipe and have it follow a set protocol, uh, which makes the life of our distiller, Tim, uh, much easier because he sets it, walks away and forgets it and does other work in the meantime. All right, so I see apples everywhere. What is going on here? So this is what brandy season looks like. Uh, we have a ton of, literally a ton, 2,000 pounds of uh, red delicious apples that we're going to process, uh, ferment, and then distill into our apple brandy. Wow. So I understand that the quality control process is quite involved. Please tell me about that. It's very important. Uh, you can't just take all these apples, wash them, grind them, and ferment them. Uh, you do have to inspect the apples, uh, for example, this one, yeah, one bad apple will spoil a bunch. Um, can't take any shortcuts, otherwise we risk producing a poor quality product. So where are we in the process now? So we just wrapped up distillation. Um, today we distilled our single malt whiskey, which unfortunately won't be ready for a while, uh, which I'll show you a little bit. Um, but in this process, we basically you know, created a, a beer, um, and we've distilled that into a spirit, which 
is actually what we've been collecting over here. Now you'll notice our fancy white bucket. Um, <laughs> obviously this is not the final product. This is, this is the byproduct of distillation. Uh, what ultimately will go into the final product has been collected here. Uh, this is the bad stuff. This is the stuff that you don't want in your product. And if you actually feel this, nah, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> if you actually feel that, it's yeah. slick, it's yeah. oily, right? Yeah, so what do you do with this? Nothing. Oh, it's, okay. it's called the tails of the distillation. You don't want to get that in your product because okay. that has the heavy oils that give you a hangover and, and the rot oh, gut. Don't so. want that. That's exactly. <laughs> We've collected all the good stuff, and this is going to go into the barrel and ultimately into bottles for consumer enjoyment. We have to separate this stuff out because, you know, we don't want to go have that going to the product. Yeah, you don't want people having hangovers, right? <laughs> Quality control, exactly. <laughs> okay, so please tell me what's in your hand right now. <laughs> so the, this completely unnecessary, but it looks cool. Uh, so we had to get it. Uh, okay. Contraption is <laughs> actually called a whiskey thief. Um, it's what we use to uh, pull out samples uh, from each of the uh, the barrels uh, to try to make sure that you know the spirit is maturing um, as it as it ages inside the barrels. So this is the final stage in your whole process for certain products. Okay. For our aged spirits, they'll go to the barrel um, where they're going to become more mature. So what you smelled out there, the good part, not <laughs> not the part at the end. Um, it was clear. It was very young, very floral, very fruity. What's going to happen inside the barrel is um, over time with the change of seasons, uh, that spirit is going to pick up the color uh, from the charred wood as well as the caramel, the vanilla, the chocolate notes uh, that a wooden cask imparts on the spirit. So how long does it stay in here for? Honestly, it's one of those things where the barrel is going to dictate when the spirit is ready and there's nothing you can really do about that. So what better way to wrap up a tour of a distillery than with a taste of a signature cocktail? We're here in the Boardroom Spirits tasting room and Marat is going to make me a... Cranberry Fizz. So I figure it's fitting for the holiday season uh, with our cranberry. This is our fresh cranberry. Uh, what I was mentioning before, it's um, organic uh, sugarcane vodka infused with real cranberries, um, then distilled through two separate stills, blended together, and uh, re-infused to produce this product. Perfect. So while you're making this, I just have a few more questions. Where can someone find your spirits besides here? So we are going to be carried at the Wine and Spirits uh, stores very soon. Um, but you can also find us at a lot of your uh, favorite local restaurants. Uh, here in Montgomery County? Here in Montgomery County. We're in pretty much all the places in Lansdale. You know, even if you don't see us on the menu, um, ask for boardroom spirits because uh, that'll help us expand the product that way. That's great. And where can we find more information on boardroom spirits? So you can go on our website, boardroomspirits.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook or Instagram. Awesome. Can't wait to look you up. Thank you, thank you. So what we've done here is combined the uh, fresh cranberry uh, with the ginger and the fresh squeezed lime. And then we're going to top that off with a little bit of club soda and garnish that with one of these fancy little limes. Love the color. <laughs> and then a little bit of ginger just to make it a little bit sweeter. And of course, a straw. Enjoy. Can't wait to try it. Oh, that's delicious. You could really taste the fresh cranberry in that. That's it for this short drive at Boardroom Spirits in Lansdale. But you can always find more information by visiting valleyforge.org. I'm Taylor Trofea, and we'll see you next time. I'm here with Eric Schultz and on the